it's not a nummy neck. It actually helps to correct the problem. It's anti-infectious. So a lot of times you spray it on, you may never have to spray that on again. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. It's another great day to be alive. We're going to have a song, three what, Rose? 537, to start with. 537, he leaded me. <coughs> mm. 
as the other programs we've had this week. Uh, this week actually has been a very, let's say, uh, fulfilling in terms of when we're looking at ourselves and what we need to do in order to live healthier lives. And so uh, we started out last uh, Sabbath with the Gospel of Health Part 1, and this tomorrow will be the Gospel of Health Part 2. But also there's been the Gospel of Nutrition, does black health matter? Uh, uh, discovering shocking truths, how sunshine affects all aspects of our life. And uh, simple remedies uh, session in terms of how we can take care of ourselves uh, naturally. And then there's going to be a second part to that tomorrow as well. So you're not going to want to miss any of the programs uh, that, are, that we have because so much are vital in terms of our health and growing and helping out and reaching others. So tonight, our topic is a lifestyle cancer cannot resist. And let me tell you, I'm really excited to hear about that because <laughs> that's something I, uh, I've been trying to hopefully dodge all my life. So, so uh, what we'll do now is we'll begin with um, a uh, brother Mayberry uh, will uh, do, be doing our talk, and I should have introduced him as well. But um, and but he's been here all week, and I hope you've gotten a lot out of it and gotten to know him and um, his dedication to the Lord, which we really appreciate. So at this point, won't we have an opening prayer? Everyone, bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come to hear uh, how we can better take care of ourselves, and not just ourselves, but those around us, for us to reach out and use this as a way to help others and to help others find their way to you. 
We thank you so much for all the blessings you've given us. We thank you for the rich, fulfilling uh, week that we've had here in terms of learning so much. We thank you, dear Lord, for uh, Brother Mayberry and him being able to come and help us with all the things that um, we, we need. We thank you, dear Lord, for guiding him and blessing him and his family. Now be with us, dear Lord, as we go through this evening and help us to continue to grow and, and especially to grow closer to you. We thank you for all these blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we have Brother Mayberry. want to say good evening. We will be starting in just a second. I just wanted to grab something before we got started. There it is. One more thing. We can start. I want to say good evening, everyone. Good evening. God bless you. How are you, how are you all doing tonight? I'm glad we have the opportunity to come together to open the word of God. Remember that God's word is a lamp and a light. And if it is a lamp and a light, would it leave us in the dark? God said, before these things happen, I tell you of them. The Bible said, the prudent man foresee the evil and hideth himself. We learn in the scripture that there was not one feeble person among the tribe of Israel as long as they were under God's care. Amen? God knows what he's doing. He prophesied disease and sickness, and he said it will come as a, as a result of not hearkening to his voice. He told us in Deuteronomy 28 that if we would obey him, he would set us on high above all nations of the earth. Now, let's be honest, family. If we are not set on high above all nations of the earth, which we're not, some people in this room probably go to yoga classes, and I'm sure if you go to the health food store and buy herbs, it's not owned by God's people. God's message of health is prospering, but in the hands of the world. It takes us back to Joseph, who was aborted from the fold by his own brethren. But Joseph had a health message. What he provided was a food everyone needed. Are y'all with me? He saw something coming, and there was a food that everyone needed. If you go back and search, they still had foods, but they didn't have the food that was needed to sustain life. They didn't have the bread of life. Are y'all with me? And so Joseph's story gives us a concept of God sending the health message through his prophets, but the prophet being rejected, and as a result, the world intercepting the prophet and the message regarding bread, which represents health and nutrition, sustainment, and the whole world, including the Israelites, had to go and bow down to the prophet that they rejected in the hands of the world. That was a prophecy. We're living in that prophecy right now, y'all. There are prejudices that exist. Unfortunately, we are told about those prejudices through the inspired pen. She said the work of the medical missionary has been made very, she said, very hard. And she went on to talk about the details of why that work was made very hard. I'm gonna fast forward this document. I want you to see this quotation. I want you to see this quotation as we move forward. I'll try to drag it on the screen over here. Maybe we can look at it. I want you to see it because it's, 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 it's that time where we have to try to 
wake up out of sleep. We can't sleep any longer. I'll blow this up and see if I can stretch it out. Glory to God. All right, so listen to this. It's not there. Let me go back. Oh, I'm going to have to somehow flip that page. Ah, okay. I want you to see this before we move on. I have to go to another book. Okay, here it is. Look at this, y'all. It's, it's right here. Talking about the work being made very hard. Just look at this real quick. She says, the gospel of health has able advocates. But, but, she says, but their work has been made, how? Very hard because so many ministers, presidents, or conferences, and others in position of influence have failed to give the question of health reform its proper attention. They have not recognized it as in its relation to the work of the message as the right arm of the body. While very little respect has been shown to this department by many of the people and by some of the ministers, the Lord has shown his regard for it by giving it abundant prosperity. That abundant prosperity is not happening within our ranks. It's not happening within our circle. The world is in that state of abundant prosperity. It's, such, it's, it's prospering so much in the world that it's bumping shoulders with the pharmaceutical industry. And they are changing hands, switching up their style of, of operation to try to keep up with the, with the onslaught or that major swelling of this new, this new attention that's being drawn toward natural medicine. Uh, this has always been God's will, his plan for his people. Christ spit in the clay, anointed the blind man's eyes. He sent, Hezekiah, he sent Isaiah to anoint, fig, to anoint Hezekiah's boils with figs, and he put Naaman in that muddy Jordan. We've always seen from God natural remedies. However, we have been very slow to really fully embrace the light that God has given us, trying not to be politically incorrect. We have took sides, even when it comes down to the pandemic. Some people will be offended by me saying this, but during the pandemic, no one wanted to voice that God had a health message. No one wanted to say there is a bomb in Gilead and go to the people in power and say, our denomination really don't need that vaccine. What I'm saying sounds tough. It's a lot of people's, the subject is controverted. And that's fine, let it be controverted. Um, but I can tell you some miracles, many miracles, down to a point that even medical doctors have sought after the products that we've had and we've given them to the doctors and they've used them in the hospitals when they had nothing else. And some of their patients recovered and some of them did not recover. But everyone that we dealt with, by the grace of God, they recovered. But God gave that material to us. We didn't go looking for it. I heard a boy speaking to me. I did what he told me. Had no clue I would ever get COVID. But it all worked out. Uh, one day we can talk more about it, but I'm saying this to say when we deal with the health message, we have a health message. This work has, though, been made very hard. As the prophet has said, she said, the work has been made very hard, and I've seen that, and I just want to say we've got to get to the point that that is no longer the case. As we enter our subject for tonight, We'll be looking at, at the subject of cancer. We'll be looking at the lifestyle that cancer cannot resist. And when we look into this lifestyle, we, we'll be able to get some deeper insight on what's actually going on. <clears throat> Nothing is happening in this world that doesn't have spiritual backing. Everything that's going on in this world is being either pushed and supported by God or pushed and supported by Satan. Nothing is idle unto itself. The prophet speaks to her. She said, the brain nerves. She could have said anything else about the brain. She said, the brain nerves, which communicate with what? The entire system are the what? Only medium through which heaven can communicate to man and affect his inmost life. So if heaven wants to communicate with man, the wires 
That cord that drops down from heaven into the mind of man is the nervous system. The enemy knows this, so he would attack that nervous system because he knows it's the only medium through which heaven can communicate with man and affect his inmost life. <clears throat> I'm going to go a little bit further. As I leave that portion and get to who we are today, I'll start with lifestyle. Anybody here ever flew on a plane before? Anybody ever flew for two hours on a plane? Yeah, you might be able to relate to what I'm going to say. Have they ever served food on the plane you were on? <laughs> they serve food and, and, and you eat, right? I need some water. Yeah. They, 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 they serve food and you eat that food, but then after they serve that food, they come back again with some more stuff. <laughs> Something to drink, right? And then you drink and you think it's all over. 15, 20 minutes pass, you're dozing off, and the next thing you know, here comes that cart again. And they're serving again. <laughs> and if you're on a five-hour flight, you're going to get plenty of activity dietarily on that flight. And before you know it, when you've drank and you think, maybe this is the end of it, thank you so much. When you think, thank you, brother, that maybe this is the end of it, guess what happens? They're back again, serving a little more. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you why I'm going into this. I want to deal with, I want to deal with lifestyle. I'm going to deal with the fact that family, we are surrounded by a warfare that's going on we're not even aware of. The way that we are being served food is contrary to the way God wants us to eat. It's contrary to the way God wants us to live. Everywhere we look, the lifestyle of the world, Satan has dominated the art of how food is handled and food is used. And we have settled into traditions that are contrary to, our, to what we know and believe. The Bible doesn't support it. Spirit of prophecy doesn't support it. And many who don't read the Bible and Spirit of prophecy in that re regard don't have no clue that this warfare is going on in the human body. But while we're constantly eating and constantly being served, uh, you can look at just the way food was prepared in the past. When you look at the 50s, you see uh, the original fountain drink of McDonald's and notice that it was just seven ounces. But by 2012, it come up to uh, about 12 ounces. It just continued to increase. And then if you look on, you'll see that others began to enlarge their cups. I even put the human stomach next to it because the human stomach is about a, a, a quart in size, roughly a liter. So I put a little stomach. So when you see that 32, that 32 represents the size of the human stomach. So when we think about the big gulp, the big gulp in the 1980s, it was the size of the human stomach. McDonald's came up with a super-sized drink, and it was 42 ounces. KFC had the mug jug. That was twice the size of the human stomach. And we go on, when you look at the teen gulp, guess what? Thank you again, thank you again. It was 100, praise God for the love, amen. You want this one? It was 128 ounces, so think about it. The teen gulp is now a gallon in size. The teen gulp is a gallon in size, so that's four times the natural, listen, the natural capacity of the human stomach four times the natural capacity. This means that if we finish that teen gulp, we have filled the belly four times its normal size. Who's increasing our drinks? And what would that do to our mind? We've learned that the condition of the belly does become the condition of the mind, as we had heard through the prophet. It's not just the men with the big gold, but even the women are taking advantage of this drinking opportunity. And not just this big gold that you see at the fountain, uh, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the gas station and, and the different convenience stores, but parents are even doing this for the little children. This little one, he's a small little fella, but he's joining into the tradition. And as we indulge in this tradition, something interesting is happening in the human body. I'm going to fast forward. 
There are books that don't end regarding food addictions and overeating. Uh, there are books dealing with, again, overeating and binging, etc. cetera. Uh, emotional eating, you name it, but we're eating. I hope these photos don't seem too, biz too bizarre, but I'm gonna show you some bodybuilders. These bodybuilders, they look fit, and they spend a lot of time in the gym working on their bodies. And there are women that get involved in that same experience, right? Female bodybuilders. But as we dip a little deeper into the dietary reality of the world today, guess what? Those bodybuilders have to eat a little more than how God will feed his people. They would eat six meals a day. Six meals. The human stomach needs five hours to fully process a meal. Five hours to fully process a meal. How are you going to feed? Six times five is 30. There's not 30 hours in a day that we're functioning. That's it's only 24 hours in a day. That's six extra hours that they need to ask the Lord to put on the day just to process the meals. When they eat this way, something happens. They flood the bloodstream with triglycerides. And when they flood the bloodstream with triglycerides like this, blood acid conditions increase. This is a welcoming site, believe it or not, for cancer. Blood sugar levels increase. Again, I said this is a welcoming site for many types of cancer. In fact, let's go and look at what we don't quite remember. In a book called The Itinerary of a Breakfast, written by John Harvey Kellogg, God revealed to his church what went on in the wilderness. He told us in the wilderness that he would feed his people twice a day. And he did that in respect to the digestive machine. But let's look at this machine and see how it actually works. Based on Kellogg's understanding and other pathologists, when a meal is taken in between 7 and 8 a.m., in four hours, it has already left the stomach and has passed through roughly 20 feet of intestine and it's making its way to the large intestine. That's four hours. By the fifth hour, it's entering into the ascending colon. Five hours. And in that fifth hour, we see another meal being taken in. We see another meal. We see another meal entering into the digestive system. But we'll go on a little bit further. By hour number 10, something interesting is happening. The first meal is going the, up the ascending colon, which we know it takes about generally eight hours in this last, roughly last six feet of colon. Uh, only four hours passing through the small intestine, which is 20 feet, or this last six feet, or last four feet. Uh, it's gonna take uh, at least eight hours. So the breakfast is in the large intestine, uh, ascending up the ascending colon, passing the transverse. And the previous meal, after 10 hours, has come to where breakfast was in the last uh, illustration. This is 5 p.m. By the 11th hour, breakfast is passing through the ascending colon and passing down the descending colon, about to go up the sigmoid colon. That's hour number 11. In the 14th hour, guess what has happened? The breakfast residue was in the pelvic colon, in other words, 14 hours after you ate that meal, 14 hours after you sprinkled those sesame seeds on that, on, that, on that food and you begin to eat it, your bowel marker is supposed to identify your meal at the rectal site in 14 hours. That's very possible. That's for a normal functioning stomach. By hour number 16, many people can have release on breakfast. 16 hours later, Everyone is not going to do this, but healthy colons will. Breakfast residue discharge, bowel movement at bedtime. It's 10 p.m. and that person has had to go and breakfast is out. Guess what? It didn't have time to rot and decay and putrefy. This means that you didn't get a lot of the toxicity that would have developed from a meal that was stagnant in the system. But in order for that breakfast to get there and for that to happen, you need fiber. If you're eating a lot of cheese, cheese is gonna slow you down, it doesn't have that fiber. If you're eating a lot of flesh, flesh will slow you down, it doesn't have that fiber. 
If you're eating a lot of mucus forming foods, mucus buildup in the digestive tract slows down normal transit activity, and again, it won't move like it's supposed to because there's just not enough fiber or lubrication. By 6 a.m. the next day, we see breakfast ready to discharge from the system, but let's go on and look a little, dip, little deeper. I'm gonna look in the middle. This is what they call the cripple colon. Notice the cripple colon, it has, it's dark all through the whole system. If you put six meals a day in your body, guess what? It's gonna do exactly what you see in the middle. The only reason you don't see it on the bodybuilders is because they're so physically active. But the minute they stop, they better be quick to stop that diet. It's already gonna cripple them while they're exercising. They won't, every time they pass gas, it's gonna smell it's gonna smell very exaggerated. They'll smell all that sulfuric, you know, all that nitrogenous material. It'll smell like, it'll just be very exaggerated. Everyone will know they, they pass gas because the food will grow rancid. Well, when the system becomes deranged like this, Ellen White said that these are our, our blood-making organs. She said these organs are our blood-making organs. So if these organs are our blood-making organs, can you make good blood out of that? When you've deranged these organs, can you make good, good blood out of it? Kellogg uh, made another uh, illustration where he showed what he called nine or more meals, nine or more meals congested in the bowel. Nine or more. That means disease have nine chances nine chances to at least inject poison into your bloodstream while these, while these meals are backed up in your system. So when we leave this and we reconsider what's actually happening when we are being served these meals on the plane or other places where we are and we're, we're partaking of these meals, somebody's laying the foundation for a traffic jam. If we're eating every two hours, I can show you other reports where in four hours uh, they did x-rays where they fed nurses and examined the stomach through x-ray and, and the stomach was empty in four hours. But then they began to let them eat every two hours. Every two hours they gave them something else. A little snack, a little knick-knack. One only had a banana and she retarded her digestion eight extra hours. We found that uh, the longest time frame that I saw was 13 hours. Breakfast food never left the stomach. If you eat a meal and it takes at least four hours for that process to go on, if you eat something before that process finishes, the meal that's previously set in the stomach will remain. And you can actually trap breakfast. If you had Captain Crunch or uh, Fruit Loops or Veggie Dog or some banana pudding or whatever you had, whatever you ate first, it can stay in your stomach 13 extra hours in the stomach. It doesn't belong there. And we wonder why some people develop stomach cancer. These are impurities. Uh, nutritionally oriented physicians, very prominent, renowned cancer killing, cancer fighting doctors, uh, researchers of old have all agreed that auto intoxication was one of the primary causes of cancer. Auto intoxication is where we poison ourselves through our mouth. That can be with bad food ingredients, that can be with poor food combinations, that could be drinking with our meals, eating too much, uh, or eating the wrong things. But there's another causative factor that I want to deal with. Do you know that sin, the lifestyle of sin, can also cause cancer? Maybe the doctor would never talk about that particular cause. But God himself said, the curse caused less shall not come. That's Proverbs 26, verse 2. He said, the curse caused less shall not come. There's going to be a cause. Let's look and see if that kind of stuff can happen as a result of sin. Bible says, the Lord have a controversy. Bible says, Yes. 
Since you hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is what? No truth. Where does truth come from? That's the word of God. The word of God is truth. John 17, 17. The Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth nor mercy. You'll find if you look deep enough that that's not just showing mercy and godly love, but that's also demonstrate mercy in ministry. So when he said there's no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land, why isn't there any knowledge of God? That means people are ashamed of their God. They're hiding their God. They're trying to fit in the crowd or be politically correct. And being politically correct today is not being a Christian. Can you go on your job and talk about Jesus? You can talk about our law. Buddha, you go and talk about Jesus and you'll find you'll be persecuted. Well, going on, he says there's no knowledge of God in the land by swearing and lying and killing and stealing. Wait a minute. Lying? That's the commandments. Killing? That's the commandments. Stealing? That's the commandment. And committing adultery? Those are God's commandments. He said they break out and blood toucheth blood. When AIDS was prominent in the world, everybody was afraid of uh, cross-contamination. Strangely, it has been proven that, in fact, scientists did it often. They could take a tumor and extract from that tumor and inject it into another mouse, and that mouse would develop cancer. And it's true that you can take a cancerous tumor, wind it up in some hot dogs, and eat that hot dog, and you can develop cancer as well. Blood, when blood touches blood, those cancer cells that are in the blood, they can enter into our blood. God said as a result of sin, blood will touch blood. And he says, therefore shall the land mourn and everyone that dwell therein shall languish. That means to waste away. With the beast of the field and the fowl of the air or the fowl of heaven, yea, the fish of the sea also shall be taken away. We hear the beast, we hear the fowl, we even hear the fish. But he, he said the land itself will also mourn. But in that morning, we see the beast, the fowl, and the fish being taken away. These are all flesh-based animals, animals that have no fiber. But they would be targeted. Sin would manifest in sickness in the animal kingdom. And if we turn on our television or our media devices and we see on the news nothing but death and and sin running rampant, bold robberies, crazy things going on, then guess what that tells us? That tells us that sin is alive and well. And if we see, hmm, I mentioned before that on the southern side I grew up among one of the wildest bunches of people. But I went to go do a ministry for somebody who had a bad foot. And when I got there, the same people that used to terrorize the community were telling me, don't go out, <laughs> don't go out. These children are crazy today. Oh, they're, they're robbing people. Yeah, and they said, don't go, to the, don't go to a restaurant. They'll come in with guns in front of the camera, and they'll take everything you have. Bold robberies, sin running rampant to a point that it has frightened the bullies of old and got them scared to go outside. But if that's going on, then in ratio to that, we should see disease in the animal kingdom. Daniel wouldn't eat the king's meat. But God told us in Proverbs, if you sit before a ruler, put a knife to your throat if you be given to appetite. The Lord said, don't eat his food. Don't desire his food. Daniel saw in his wisdom what that diet would do to him. They changed Daniel's name. They sent him to a crazy school, and we heard no complaint from Daniel. They even changed his neighborhood, and we heard no complaint. Conquered his people. No complaint from Daniel. But when they decided to change his diet, his plate, Daniel said, I am willing to risk my hair being cut off by the king than to eat that. That should have caused us to investigate. We'll keep going. The Lord said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee and thou and, th and, th and thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget 
thy children. Have we forgotten God? He said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But he didn't let us get by as being ignorant. He said, because thou has rejected knowledge. We have medical evangelists that have worked feverishly to try to hold up the arms of this beautiful people and this beautiful message. But their work has been made very, very hard. So much so that they often drop out and they disappear. As sin increase, disease will increase. So God tells us that men will languish with the beast of the field as a result of sin. So I'm saying to you, sin is one of those welcoming sites for cancer. But let me make it a little plainer. Let's go to the book of Job. Job said in Job 33, the Lord spake through Job and said, he is chastened also with pain upon his bed. Consider a stage four cancer sufferer, somebody who's terminal. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain so that his life abhorred bread and his soul dainty meats. He doesn't want to eat. He doesn't even want the nice meats. He doesn't want to eat anything. His body is in a mode where it is trying to detox so it will refuse food. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen and his bones that worse were not seen stick out. That means now you can see the skeletal form of his skull. He's now in a position where nature is reducing the amount of tissue on his body. Yea, his soul draw nigh unto the grave and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness. God said then he is merciful unto him, or gracious unto him, and said, deliver him from going down to the pit, I have found a ransom. I'm reading this because I'm telling you that from the Bible, God is saying the symptoms of terminal cancer can occur as a result of sin. He said, he says, his flesh shall be fresher than a child. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him, and he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not. Some people, that one line right there, will determine their future on that deathbed. If any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going down into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Oh, that's beautiful. Lo, all these things worketh God oftentimes with man to bring back his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but I'm going to go a little further here with that decaying process. I have shown from the scripture that sin can encourage or welcome cancer. Sin can be one of those lifestyles that cancer cannot resist. Kellogg speaks and says, the flesh-eating habit loads the colon with a remnant of undigested flesh that undergoes the same changes which take place in the decaying carcass of a dead animal left to itself. Thus the body is flooded with the most horrible and loathsome poisons. And no marble, and no marble, and, and the marble is not that, the, that human life is so short and so full of miseries, mental, moral, and physical, but that civilized human beings are able to live at all. The civilized colon with its accumulated residue of five to 15 mils or more is a Golgotha pollution a venerable Pandora's box of disease. Kellogg's given commentary on the colon, the human colon, the state of the colon. We're talking about the welcoming site for cancer. I'm gonna pause here, I'm not gonna go any further there. I'm gonna start asking some interesting questions. Scientists of old said that, that if your pH is on the acid side, you are a welcoming site for disease. 
scientists say that. If your pH is on the acid side, you are welcome in sight for disease. What brings the pH on the acid side? Anybody? You say soda? She said soda does it. Yeah, that's true, it does. Why? It's a carbonated material. And the carbon in that material, that carbonated material, uh, reduces oxygen availability in the blood. And when oxygen levels drop, acid levels increase. This would also mean then that if we don't exercise like we should, and we don't breathe like we should, no deep breathing, no alkalinity of the blood, right? So a lack of oxygen can also be a welcoming site for disease. This means if we turn the heat up in the winter and the summer, and we close the doors in our house, and we, it's cold, it's cold, and we close the doors and we never let fresh air in, we create an acidic condition, which is a welcoming site for disease. What else causes acidity in the blood? Anyone else? Going to bed on your food. Going to bed on your food reduces the motility of that meal, stresses the digestive organs, and you can kind of say indirectly it can culminate into an indirect cause of acidity in the body. But I want to talk about one that we don't hear much about. Before I do, I want to ask and see if you know what it is. What is a food or a beverage? that increase blood acid levels in, the, in an exaggerated way. Anybody know? Protein. Protein does. When you increase excessive amounts of protein, you elevate uric acid levels. And again, if you have that high protein diet, but you're not breathing like you're supposed to, and you are drinking the sodas, and maybe you're doing something else, going to sleep on your meals, eating too late, and falling asleep on those meals. That could help to increase acid levels. But what about this food here, the coffee bean? Do you know that scientists say that a cup of coffee has more uric acid in it than a cup of human urine? <laughs> if you put human urine next to coffee, the human urine is less acidic than the coffee. Isn't that something? Oh, it's too quiet in here. Saints, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Remember I was talking about the brain nerve earlier? Coffee bleaches, it's a, it's a diuretic. So it pushes your water-soluble vitamins right out of your body, straight through your urethra. So coffee will be a perfect tool in the hand of the enemy because it can block that brain nerve. And I'm going to tell you another thing. You ever want to see? I ain't looking at nobody because these people in this audience are a little bit, oh, <laughs> ain't going to look at them because <laughs> I don't want to put no, I don't want to listen to this, y'all. Do you know that when a person drinks coffee and they are fully involved in a relationship with coffee, guess what happens? They have a problem with their patience. If they have to wait too long, they get cranky. There was a woman who said in an article online, blog, that she was standing in the store uh, about to order some coffee and somebody came in behind her and they were in a huff. And she made her own commandment. How should not stand in the way of a person who's trying to get their coffee? Isn't that something? Because of how impatient they get. We're just talking about acidity. This is one of the most toxic foods in the world, and I call it most toxic because of what it does to the brain. The prophet comments on it. She says it affects us morally. Who would think? But it's an acidic food, and it welcomes disease. It is a strong acid, so it will welcome an acidic uh, state of the tissue, which could breed disease and sickness. Cancer loves acidic blood. Let me explain why cancer loves acidic blood so much. There's a process of metabolism that nature goes through. Nature calls it uh, glycolysis. Nature calls it glycolysis. Glycolysis is the process of food being converted into glucose. That glucose, excuse me, is processed into something called pyruvate, 
a peruvic acid, which is metabolized by the uh, mitochondria of the cell in something called the Krebs cycle. And if it can meet the Krebs cycle, uh, it will only get into that cell through something called aerobic glycolysis. That's where your breathing air is involved. Usually when you go through aerobic glycolysis, the byproduct is carbon dioxide, as we talked about in the past. But if you're not breathing enough, and the windows are closed, and you're drinking that soda, and you're sluggish, you're sitting around watching television, then nature will process that same glucose through what they call the anaerobic process of glycolysis. When you go through the anaerobic state of glycolysis, it is a perfect breeding ground for cancer. It's a miracle that more people don't have cancer. That's why you're going to see a whole lot more cancer, I promise you. You're going to see a whole lot more. Cancer will always be the number two. Heart disease is going to be the number one. Cancer will rise up and get so close, but it will always be number two. But you'll see a lot more cancer because people have naturally more sedentary lifestyle. People that get out in the sun and spend more time out in nature exercising, you hardly ever hear of a powerful athlete getting cancer unless he's shooting steroids and doing something really strange. But if he's just organic, he'll be around a while. He'll be around a long time. But people who are sedentary, and a lot of them who sit behind uh, closed doors or windows on pharmaceuticals, a lot of them end up, end up with, a, with an experience with cancer. Talking about the acid state, I'm going to tell you that when a person drinks caffeinated products, most of your caffeinated products increase uric acid, your uric acid levels as well. You can do an experiment if you want to. Take some Mountain Dew. Anybody you know, a chronic Mountain Dew drinker, watch them. They're going to start developing pain in their knees and joints. Watch and see. And they're not going to be too far off from the coffee drinker. They're going to have the same mind, the same fidgety mind, and they're going to have aches and pains. Caffeinated drinks increase uric acid levels again. Let me go back to glycolysis. Science says, this is natural, modern pathology. Science says that when, that when cancer is in your body and you eat sugar, the cancer eats the sugar first. It rushes it. It consumes the sugar very quickly. But when it consumes the sugar, it, it has an, a release of, of waste. It's almost like eating and defecating. When a cancer eats the sugar, it converts its residue into, into uh, lactic acid. So when it converts its residue into lactic acid, the more you eat sugar, the weaker you'll get. If you have cancer, the more sugar you eat, the weaker you'll get. Because as the cancer eats the sugar, it's going to turn that sugar into lactic acid. Now, once the body is full of lactic acid, the liver tries to clean up the lactic acid. But the way that the cycle works is once the liver starts trying to clean up the lactic acid, it, it converts the lactic acid back into glucose. So the cancer, watch this. This is a deadly cycle for somebody who doesn't want to have cancer. But if they have it, watch this. You all know that sugar lowers the immune system. Y'all know that. Well, if the liver is converting lactic acid back into sugar, then that person's body is operating like a diabetic machine. And you know diabetics heal slow. But when it starts operating like a diabetic machine, immunity becomes low, but cancer thrives. Understand what I'm saying? Immunity becomes low, but cancer begins to thrive. And how is this happening, and what is it? What's actually happening? The only thing that's happening is that cancer is getting a hold of the sugar, processing it before you can really metabolize it, and convert and converting it into a lot of lactic acid. Now, we know that when we exercise, run, jog, lift weights, whatever we do when we exert ourselves, when we feel that burning pain that's telling us we've done enough, that burning pain that says, that's it, please stop. That burning pain that slows us down when we're running in a race, that burning pain is lactic acid. You can do a homework assignment. Find somebody that's stage four cancer who barely can walk. And they're walking like this, and they're real tired. And they're breathing like they've been running in a race. Check their pH. Check their pH. 
get some blood work done. And if you notice that lactic acid level is up, the only thing that's happening is that the cancer has sugar to eat. And it's slowing them down quickly. Cancer will use sugar like a Mexican cowboy will use a lasso. And the cancer will take that sugar and throw it around the neck of that person and tie them down like they were just a little, a little, little cow. Lasso them up and tie them up and tie them down. How could this be prevented? Sugar will bring on an acidic state in the body. Lactic acid is an, is an acid. How could we avoid this? You know how we can avoid it? Putting the B vitamins back in the body. Because in order for the Krebs cycle to run its course, it actually needs B vitamins. When B vitamins are available, B vitamins help to induce aerobic glycolysis. This helps to produce carbon dioxide waste instead of lactic acid waste. When you breathe out carbon dioxide, Venus and Serena were playing tennis the other night. We were just visiting, we saw it on the television. And, and, and they were putting out carbon dioxide. That doesn't hurt you. But if you're internalizing that carbon dioxide in the form of a different metabolite known as lactic acid, it's going to slow you down. So Floyd, what are you saying in all that you said? I'm saying a high sugar lifestyle is a perfect welcoming site for cancer. The six meals a day is a perfect welcoming site for cancer. Why? When we eat six meals a day, anytime you contradict that five hour cycle, you force the bloodstream to be flooded with triglycerides. And that 13 hours that I was talking about where food stays in the stomach, that 13 hours is 13 hours of glycemic exposure. That's 13 hours of sugar freedom, where that sugar is going to run rampant in the system and that pancreas is going to have to overwork. Your pancreas actually has the ability to help fight the cancer, not just in metabolizing the sugar, but it actually excretes alkaline materials. Your gallbladder has the same ability unless they've taken it out of you. If you don't have it, then you just don't have that advantage. We'll go a little bit further. Let's brighten it up and liven it up a little bit. Y'all ready to brighten it up? Let's brighten it up a little bit. There is a... Something that I was showing earlier and I want y'all to see it. Uh, we'll go here, see if we can grab it. I don't know where it is now, orientation. All right, here we go. Look at this, y'all. Some people have seen these pictures before. These are mutations of cells. These are mutations of cells. This is where the body starts to lose its capability to function normally. This is where cancer is gaining the march, gaining the advantage. But let's look at one of the other causative factors. A California man dying of cancer just appeared in court claiming a popular weed killer made him sick. In the first case of its kind to reach trial, Dwayne Johnson is suing Monsanto, the maker of Roundup. The 46-year-old blames his 2014 cancer diagnosis on Roundup's active ingredient, glyphosate. Interesting. Hope there's no glyphosate in our garden. Hope that the gardener's not using any glyphosate around us. This morning, fallout from a monumental verdict. This case was historic. Friday, a jury in San Francisco found biochemical giant Monsanto liable for former school groundskeeper Dwayne Johnson's cancer. Johnson says constant use of the household product Roundup led to his diagnosis of terminal non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Doctors have given him just months to live. The jury awarding $289 million in damages. If you know you're going to die, you might as well not die in vain. You might as well say to yourself, well, let's put this out here, what happened to me? Johnson's lawsuit is the first of hundreds against Monsanto, alleging it knew the weed killer's link to cancer and failed to notify the public. In 2015, the World Health Organization classified the chemical glyphosate, an active ingredient in Roundup, as, quote, probably carcinogenic to humans. We'll stop there for a minute. Anybody go to Walmart and see Roundup? 
in the gardening aisle. Not a lot of Walmarts here, but you can go find it in Walmart, go to Home Depot, Lowe's, you'll find it. It's still on the shelf. Well, if this man has sued, why would that stuff still be on the shelf? Come on now. We'll keep going. What was that? Wasn't in the food. Somebody must not care enough about men not getting cancer. Someone must not care enough. A unanimous jury here in, in San Francisco has told Monsanto enough. You did something wrong and now you have to pay. Attorneys for Monsanto insist their product is safe and they plan to appeal. The verdict today does not change the science. But for thousands of plaintiffs, many suffering with cancer, the verdict is a beacon of hope. And that's global, so that's bigger than me, way bigger than me. So I hope that that light will be shined. For today, Steve Patterson, NBC News. Hello today, fans. Thanks. We'll stop there. Through the Inspire pen, we are told that pork also is a cause of cancer. She mentions pork as a direct cause of cancer. She had more commentary on cancer causes, but uh, she said pork is a direct cause of cancer. So the lifestyle that cancer cannot resist, one of them is glyphosate. Having exposure to glyphosate, another one is pork and pork products. Somewhere I have a video where they're showing all of these products that we use that are made from pork that we use every day and we put in our, a lot of the lipsticks and things we put on our bodies and we know not that they contain the pork and this also helps to produce cancer. Even with the veggie capsules, you're trying to get herbs in your body. There are gelatin capsules, some of which can be derived from, from pork itself. There's another innocent, well, it's not innocent. There's another causative factor cancer, another situation that welcomes cancer into the human body. And uh, you may have heard of this, you may have put some thought to it, or maybe you haven't, but uh, I'll dig into it. And you tell me if you've heard this before. Baby powder, anybody use baby powder? Baby powder is one of the most powerful agents for producing cancer. Lots of women with breast cancer, when I was a teenager, girls would put it in their shirts. They would put it in their shirts, you see it come out of their bras at the top when we were in high school, because we were trying to be fresh. We boys would put it in our shoes, you know, trying to keep our little feet dry and not sweating, and some people put that powder in other places. But guess what? That powder is known to cause cancer known to cause cancer. It's a welcoming site for cancer. And I'll just kind of go ahead and go through these, these, these images so you can see. This is a breast that has been removed. You see the tumor on the breast. Unfortunately, cancer. Woman's breast being taken off. This product called talc, uh, destroying the woman. And think about it. If it's this way, we shouldn't have that stuff on the market. Why would that be on the market? Destroy that woman. Notice only her breasts are affected. You can Google and find this. For years, pharmaceutical companies have known that their baby powder products contain carcin carcinogens. Notice what we're about to hear here. Welcome back. Pharmaceutical giant Johnson & Johnson has experienced a rough few days on Wall Street. Its company investments have been falling since an explosive report published by Reuters last week revealed Johnson & Johnson knowingly covered up facts that its popular talcum powder products could cause cancer. This isn't the first time that the 132-year-old company has come under scrutiny for similar accusations. RT's Anya Parampil has the latest. For decades, women around the world have used a Johnson & Johnson raw talc and baby powder products as deodorant or antiperspirant. Thanks to a Reuters investigation, we now know over those same years, the company knew its products contained carcinogens and conspired to shield that information from the public. 
Reuters took a look at internal company documents which have been revealed through a lawsuit filed against Johnson & Johnson, a lawsuit which includes 11,700 plaintiffs now claiming that the company's talc caused their cancers. The documents demonstrate, quote, that from at least 1971 to the early 2000s, the company's raw talc and finished powders sometimes tested positive for small amounts of asbestos, and that company executives, mine managers, scientists, doctors, and lawyers fretted over the problem and how to address it while failing to disclose to regulators or the public. Quote, the documents also depict successful efforts to influence U.S. regulators' plans to limit asbestos in cosmetic talc products and scientific research on the health effects of talc. Toxic asbestos minerals were detected in Johnson & Johnson talcum powder as far back as 1957. What's more, the documents show J&J &J lied to federal regulators in the 1970s when claiming no asbestos had been identified in their products. If ingested through the air, according to the World Health Organization, quote, all types of asbestos cause lung cancer, mesothelioma, cancer of the larynx and ovary, and fibrosis of the lungs. Thousands of individuals currently suing J&J are women who claim they've developed ovarian cancer because they've used Johnson & Johnson products. And they're not alone. In July of this year, a St. Louis jury demanded Johnson & Johnson pay $4.7 billion in damages to 22 women for that very reason. Still, Johnson & Johnson's outside litigation counsel told Reuters, quote, the scientific consensus is that the talc used in talc-based body powders does not cause cancer. This is true even even if, and it does not, Johnson & Johnson's cosmetic talc had ever contained minute, undetectable amounts of asbestos. These denials directly contradict the internal memos and reports now available online for all to see. In Washington, Anya Parampil, RT. We'll stop there. It was never God's will for a woman's body to be mutilated this way, but this material can cause deformation of the tissue. But what is the welcoming site that's breeding and bringing on this cancer? One of them happened to be the asbestos and the talc that's found in common baby powder. So we see baby powder, we see uh, the sugar factor, we see lifestyle as far as being sedentary and not breathing properly. Uh, these things also produce a welcoming site. We see the high sugar saturation that's in the world today. Everywhere you turn, uh, products are oversaturated with sugar and if we consume those products, we weaken our immune system. And guess what? In weakening our immune system, if we decide we might want to just want to just go for 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 a hot dog, guess what happens? We decide we want to just go for a hot dog. We uh. We don't understand how that process works, and so we don't see uh, what's involved. And as a result, we may eat into tumors or bite into tumors because this particular meat is oftentimes grossly mutilated. I noticed some uh, very interesting uh, images. I'll see if I can pull them. I just move on. We'll come to things that are common to us. In the past, there was a oil, well, a nuclear waste experience that happened with Fukushima. Anybody remember that? And as a result, you remember, so I don't have to go that far with it. With it. I'll fast forward. But listen. The largest ocean in Fukushima nuclear disaster has contaminated the world's largest ocean in only five years and it's still leaking 300 tons of radioactive waste every day. In 2011, an earthquake created a tsunami that caused a meltdown at the TEPCO nuclear power plant in Fukushima, Japan. Three nuclear reactors melted down and released radiation. Over the next three months, radioactive chemicals leaked into the Pacific Ocean. However, the numbers may actually be much higher as Japanese official estimates have been proven by several scientists to be flawed in recent years. 
Fukushima continues to leak an astounding 300 tons of radioactive waste into the Pacific Ocean every day. It will continue to do so indefinitely as the source of the leak cannot be sealed as it is inaccessible to both humans and robots due to extremely high temperatures. It should come as no surprise that Fukushima has contaminated the entire Pacific Ocean in just five years. This could easily be the worst environmental disaster in human history and it is almost never talked about by politicians, establishment scientists, or the news. Even if we can't see the radiation itself, some parts of North America's western coast have been feeling the effects for years. Not long after Fukushima, fish in Canada began bleeding from their gills, mouths, and eyeballs. This disease has been ignored by the government and has decimated native fish populations, including the North Pacific herring. In Western Canada, independent scientists have measured a 300% increase in the level of radiation. According to them, the amount of radiation in the Pacific Ocean is increasing every year. Further south in Oregon, starfish began losing legs and then disintegrating entirely when Fukushima radiation arrived there in 2013. Now, they are dying in record amounts, putting the entire oceanic ecosystem in that area at risk. However, government officials say Fukushima is not to blame even though radiation in Oregon tuna tripled after Fukushima. In 2014, radiation on California beaches increased by 500%. In response, government officials said that the radiation was coming from a mysterious unknown source and was nothing to worry about. However, Fukushima is having a bigger impact than just the west coast of North America. Scientists are now saying that the Pacific Ocean is already radioactive and is currently at least five to ten times more radioactive than when the U.S. government dropped numerous nuclear bombs in the Pacific during and after World War II. I won't go no further. We'll talk a little bit more and then we'll prepare to wind up a bit. Listen to this, y'all. Prophet speaks and counsels to the church and she says on page 22, paragraph 7, the effect of a flesh diet may not be immediately realized, but this is no evidence that is not hurtful. Few can be made to believe that it is a meat that they have eaten, which has poisoned their blood and caused their suffering. Many die of diseases wholly due to meat eating, while the real cause is not suspected by themselves or by others. This means that we can eat a contaminated something that we don't even ever discern that it was really the cause. It's something that we want to be careful with. She went on to talk about cancer and she said, the idea of meat eating, or the idea of eating dead flesh is abhorrent to me. One living animal eating the flesh of another animal is shocking. There is no call for it. All your excuses made in regard to faintness is an argument why you should eat more, I'm sorry, why you should eat no more meat. Cancerous tumors and all inflammatory diseases are largely caused by meat eating, she said. She had something to say about the fish, and uh, we may look at that or read it at another time. But here she says, from the light given me, the prevalence of cancer and tumors is largely due to gross living on dead flesh. But that knowledge, boy, how much more we could have been prepared for what is coming. I'm going to go to another place. When you hear Ellen White talk about cancer, you hear her call cancer a germ. She refers to cancer as a germ. You look at a germ, a germ falls in three categories, bacteria, virus, and fungus. If a germ can be bacterial, then when God spake to us through scientists telling us that the bread has antibacterial qualities when it's made the right way, then this means if we eat our daily bread the way God told us, we're actually taking an anti-cancer agent just in the bread that we eat. Early on, I talked about how cancer was known to derive from the common bread that we eat on the shelves. So if we're eating bread every day on our regular store shelves, 
the preservatives in that bread is also inviting cancer into our body. So we're kind of in a laser house of cancer, if you will. Strange, sad, but very, very true. I'll mention just a little bit, and then we'll wind it up. When excess insulin spills into the bloodstream, science says that it suppresses bile secretion. Anything that suppresses bile secretion is going to reduce how much calcium our bodies are going to pick up. Our fat-soluble vitamins are going to suffer. Alkalinity in the blood is also going to suffer. Now, this can come as a result of just eating between meals for a long period of time. So the women that were on the plane giving out all the food, if people are used to eating like that all day, they will eventually suppress bile. And as they suppress bile, they will increase acid conditions of the blood. Unfortunately, if their posture is not good and they have poor posture, they're still not going to be deep breathers. If they're under stress, stress, unfortunately, will also exaggerate and exacerbate a cancerous condition. If a person has cancer, stress can be terrible. What makes stress so terrible is that stress increases cortisol levels, stress increases epinephrine levels, and all of these are what scientists call hyperglycemic hormones. When you are scared, fight or flight is a sugar factor. So when you're in fight or flight mode, you're keeping sugar available to cancer cells. Anyone who's in stress or distress in their heart will feed the cancer. If they're angry, they're going to feed the cancer. If they're afraid, they're going to feed the cancer. We've heard people say in the past that thyroid, I apologize, I'm looking at this. We've heard people say in the past that when people become angry, the immune system drops for four hours. Can you imagine someone laying in their bed with cancer and a missionary is there to help and while he's discussing with the caretaker what he's about to do, there are other family members arguing and we don't believe in that and we don't want that in here and they're arguing with each other over the help guests. What a crazy environment to be in when you're sick. I have found many of the people that are suffering to try to do, they would do whatever any side said just to please them and try to keep the peace. One family member said, here, the doctor said take this. You need this insured and it's full of sugar. Then the other family members say, uh, I want to give you this herbal tea. And when, when, one, when, when, when one group is around, they will take what that one says. And other groups around, they will take what that one says. Just to try to say to the groups, I love you. I'm, I'm not trying to fight you. I'm just trying to get well. Unfortunately, it's a really bad place for somebody who's suffering with cancer because they're playing politics trying to fit in. I can go on all night talking about the multitude of acidic products that will promote the activity of cancer. Who would have ever thought that when you take a little too much salt in your body, you turn acidity up in your body? Salt. Who would have thought when you take a little too much salt, when you're excessive with the salt, you cause an acidic state in your blood? Isn't that interesting? Who would have ever thought that a little salt will activate your pancreas just like sugar will? We should have known that. But our time is spent somewhere else where we're distracted. But yeah, a little salt will activate your pancreas and overwork it just like sugar will. But we should know that. That means that little bag of potato chips. <laughs> we say no sugar in here. And we crunch and crunch, and I've been guilty myself. But it's no good. Go ahead. Even a good salt, yep. Even a good salt. Excessive amounts of the good salt, once we do too much, nature will begin to protest. And strangely, that's why if you'll notice, some of the wise guys who work with cancer, they will give them little to no salt. They're very light-handed on the salt. And you'll hear the people complain about it. But those guys know that if you give too much salt, you're going to start beating that pancreas up. And the pancreas, when it's overworked and beat down, you, you actually need the pancreas a lot when you're dealing with cancer because the pancreas is supposed to subdue the glucose levels. It's supposed to help regulate glucose levels. It's supposed to secre secrete the insulin. And without that insulin, it's hard to get glucose into the cell and get it out of the main blood environment. And it's a whammy. It's a catch-22 when you're dealing with with cancer and glycemic metabolism because 
if you leave the sugar in the extracellular environment, it deteriorates cells and arteries. It'll, it'll kill you in the extracellular environment. But then if a person has cancer, it could also kill a person intracellularly because that's exactly what the cancer wants. It wants to be able to pick that sugar up to keep its work going. So I would say a high sugar diet is not a friendly diet for somebody who's trying to avoid cancer or trying to fight cancer. So putting that sugar off, make your sugar your healthy sugars, oranges, apples, cherries, blueberries, blackberries, cantaloupe. Make, convert your taste buds where fruit become your dessert. If you get to that point, you're in a winning position. But if you continue to abuse the pies and the pastries and the over-sweetened desserts that we see in a lot of the stores, your blood is perfectly prepared for cancer. Cancer will be like a match, and the blood will be like a stack of dry hay in the summertime. As soon as that match hit it, it's going to find a perfect environment to thrive. And most people are in that position. So think about it. You're stressing. Posture bad. Got the windows closed, the room dark. Maybe you're in the bed, you don't want to get out. That is a terrible position to be in. And then you're, you're eating for comfort, so you're binge eating or emotionally eating. That's a terrible place to be in. Terrible place to be in. And God help you if you practice things like self-abuse. The world teaches that that's a safe sex practice. But when a person starts doing that, Ellen White said, it, it wakes up cancers that would have lied dormant in a person's body their whole lifetime. They never would have seen cancer. But with that kind of practice, they awaken the cancer. So what, what God is telling us through the prophet is that when people masturbate or practice self-abuse, a chemistry goes on in the body that knocks on cancer's door and say, get up, wake up. And the only way that that can change, Lord have mercy, is if they, they cease it. When God said it's better to marry than to burn, I'll talk about it just for a second. The human body is so intelligently designed by God that when a man and woman come together, there are secretions that even men are not aware of that they have that connect with a female body and she knows that that's a man. Her body is very aware that that is a man. Just like, as terrible as this sound, somebody too old to breastfeed can try to nurse on a woman for milk and her body will not give milk to them. It won't even form milk. But a little baby will nurse and her body will give milk to the baby because the baby's mouth has a chemistry in it that communicates with that mother and that her body's designed for a baby. Just like a man's body is designed for a woman and her body is designed for a man. Today in the world that we live in, we're in an oversexed world, oversexed, overstimulated world. And guess what? Scientists have proven that when you spice up the food, too much cayenne, too many habaneros and jalapenos and, 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 and other uh, peppers, that you spice up the diet, it excites the natural lower passions. And you find yourself eager for satisfaction. And the more you are prepped, the more eager you can become. And God help you if you're chemically prepared, and then the environment around you is inducing it. And the teachers and the colleges are teaching that you should do it, and they're teaching in the schools now that the kids should do it. And if we look around, y'all, everywhere we look, from the vaccines to what they're teaching our children, to the foods that we're eating, to the homes we live in, the products we're putting on our bodies, we are literally in the lion's den with, with uh, cancer-causing agents. And the only thing that's going to help us is we got to eat a healthy diet and follow the laws of health as best we can. If we do that, God would honestly protect us. People are dying of cancer, but nobody has to die of cancer. It's very, very curable. Very curable. But the people that start revealing the secrets of how it's cured, they don't stay around very long. Somebody makes sure they disappear very fast. So it's not even wise to come out in the public and advertise it, unfortunately. And can you imagine the mind of a missionary or a health practitioner who has a cure and he, he shares it with people? If you knew what I knew, it's a, kind of a tightrope. Uh, look at the history. Guys have come out with cures 
and they've gotten disappointed because they thought they would get a lot more support, even by the people behind them, but they, stood, they end up standing alone, and it becomes very depressing to them. So I personally believe that the whole cancer experience is Satan's design. I believe that he's gearing lifestyle and gearing the, tweaking the environments so that he can produce as much cancer as he can. Let me say this last thing that's a shock to you. There's an element called selenium that's naturally found in the soil. And scientists say wherever selenium is found, cancer is not found. They're saying that if you live in an environment where the soil is rich in selenium, you won't see, you won't see cancer there. But you know what's shocking? During COVID, you heard a lot of people pushing products. Tell me a few products that they push. And I'm going to share some which are going to shock you. What were people taking naturally to get rid of the uh, COVID to, to fight the virus? Say it a little louder. Zinc. Do you know when you take too much zinc, it depletes your selenium? Too much zinc depletes your selenium reserve and lays a foundation for you to develop the cancer. Isn't that something? Well, I would say this. Once you exceed your recommended daily amount, I would say roughly 25 milligrams of zinc. If you exceed that, you really, if you're a man and you've been really messing up and you're trying to replenish, and you're doing 50 milligrams of zinc, I won't do it for too long. 10 days. After the 10 days, just live your life. Eat right. Eat black eyed peas once or twice a week. And that's enough to give you the zinc you need and just exercise and live the right way. If you do that, you'll be okay. But if you take zinc supplements and you're just popping and popping and popping and popping, they have some benefit to you in relation to colds and stuff. But over time, nature's gonna build a tolerance and you won't have that, that selenium reserve, which is so important. It also, selenium supports your liver and works hand in hand with glutathione, which is very important for helping to fight, you know, that cancer bug. So in all that I've said tonight, I will not prolong the lifestyle that cancer cannot resist is the lifestyle, unfortunately, that most of us are living. If we're not getting enough water, we're not even purging our blood. Our blood is 90% water. The human blood is 90% water. But if 90% of our drinks are not water, then our blood is 90% in trouble. Body 75% water. But if 75% of our hydration intake is not water, then we have done a disservice to our bodies. I read through the Inspire pen, and I gotta read this one before we close. And the white made a very interesting comment, and I took it and I saved it because I thought we should read it. Let's see if I can find it. I don't have it here in my notes. I thought I did. I do. I just got to locate it. If you would give me just one second, I'm just looking this one place. Oh, there we go. Shocking. We'll read this quotation even though this is not the one, I'm gonna still read it. She said, to become acquainted with the wonderful human organism, the bones, muscles, stomach, liver, bowels, heart, and pores of the skin, and to understand the dependence of one organ upon another for the healthful action of all is a study in which most mothers take no interest. Are you a mother? Have you taken interest in that? If you haven't, she's definitely a prophet because she said most mothers don't. She says they know nothing of the influence of the body upon the mind and of the mind upon the body, the mind which allies finite to the infinite. They do not seem to understand. Every organ of the body was made to be servant to the mind. Isn't that interesting? 
That means that when the organs of the body are affected, the mind is directly affected, saints. So if Satan want to mess with our mind, he can mess with our body. Going on. The mind which allies itself, okay, it says every organ of the body must be servant to the mind. The mind is the capital of the body. I'm just going to state what she said earlier. She said that it is just as much a sin to violate the laws of our being than to violate God's Ten Commandments. Uh, there's another place where she talks about uh, brown foods, crispy foods. Now, this is, uh, this is general science talking. It's not the way. It says when some vegetables like potatoes are heated too high to too high temps, they give off a chemical called, and you can pronounce that, studies show that rats who took this particular acrylamide in their drinking water got cancer. You hear that? That means another lifestyle that can invite cancer is that shh, you know how they get everything has got that batter? You know the batter, right? It's gold, it becomes golden brown. They might put that batter around some shrimp or some drumsticks, and then they had a deep thing of grease at the, you know, the fast food place, and then they, they just, that grease is looking innocent. It's quiet, and then as soon as they put that rack in there, that grease ferociously just starts cooking whatever goes in it, and it just browns it up. But the Lord is telling us that deep fried and crispy fried, we like it crispy and crunchy. It's fun, crunchy. Just come with a price. And it's the same thing with the meat. When the meat falls, when the fat of the meat falls onto the coals, when we barbecue, blacks like to barbecue, that, 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 that fat distills back up onto the meat. And what hits those coals and, and burns, and when it distills back onto the meat, that meat is carcinogenic. And we eat that. Hmm. Isn't that something? Many are not aware that when you drink coffee, scientists have said that the same combustible materials that's in cigarette smoke is in the coffee, the roasted coffee bean. When we drink it, we got a low-grade liquid smoking going on. Isn't that something? The decaf is even worse. The decaf has something in it called methyl chloride. You can look it up. Methyl chloride, methyl chloride. Methyl chloride is a chemical that they use supposedly to draw caffeine out of the coffee bean. But the merchant is not a fool. If you look at methyl chloride and you look at the Environmental Protection Agency's records on methyl chloride, you'll find methyl chloride is more of an excitotoxin to the nerves than the caffeine itself. So they got another agent that'll keep you still with a little kick, and it's just as deadly as what they're taking out. <laughs> In other words, the drug dealer is gonna get his money one way or another. I know that we're not necessarily doing it this way, and the truth, if the truth be told, I'm not here to like fake nothing. If the truth be told, even our tofu that we dip down in the deep fried. Once we get it crispy fried, tofu ain't no better. Let's tell the truth. It's not no better. And the sad thing, Brother Alibi, is it's hard to find a place where we can eat right. We see, the, we see it, but what can we do about it? There'll never be a change if somebody don't stand up and do something. And some men who are willing to stand up, people, they, they kind of dug down and say, oh, he's being aggressive. He's being a tyrant. But you got to do something to get people away. You've got to say, hey, let's do something. Nehemiah had to chase people and pull hair out of people's head just to get the wall built back. Sometimes strange situations like that bring results. All right, we're going to leave it here. We've talked a little bit about the lifestyle that cancer cannot resist. Cancer likes stress. It likes sugar. It likes eating between meals. It loves when you close your windows. It hates when you exercise. It likes the person who refused to exercise. And I know you're going to point the finger at me, but it likes people that don't go to bed, to stay up too late. It does. It does, y'all. It does. Because you do most of your healing during your sleeping hours. We're going to wind up here. I'm just going to ask a couple of questions, and then we're going to we're going to pray a special prayer tonight. We're going to ask God to protect us. Only God knows how many people in this audience right now could be have tumors and cancer in their body and don't even know it. 
And I didn't talk nothing about what to do. But I'll talk about that just before we close. I give two remedies, two simple remedies. Any questions? Anyone? Anyone? teenager oh sorry <laughs> when they turn you know like older that cancer was found in them or anything like that like was the study only done on what you mentioned on you know already adults or teenagers um, I did think about that in fact I got some uh, slides with little babies they're putting baby powder on the babies I know that a lot I used to ask God why a lot of children ended up with cancer you had these children's cancer hospitals and we would have to investigate. I haven't heard anything, but I can definitely see what's going on with that. When I was a kid, we used um, those powders too. And uh, many people that we know, you know, end up with cancer. I look and wonder, you know, and thank God that we didn't get it, but I can see how babies can be afflicted. And we got a lot of kids in these children's hospitals who want to come up with cancer. We think, what did that child eat wrong? How did the child get cancer and the parent doesn't have it? But if you remember, when children come into the world, it takes time for their immunity to develop. And they come into the world compromised. And if they're exposed to certain things, the risk could probably be just as high as adults. I don't really, well, little children don't have breasts, so they, they, can't, they don't generally de develop breast cancer. But if you'll notice, even with the cancers, it's usually glandular. Um, the glands inside of a woman's breast, the prostate gland, pancreatic cancer, the pancreatic gland, thyroid gland, thyroid cancer, um, pituitary tumors, it's also a gland. Um, you see a lot of these cancers affecting the glandular system. Um, I don't know um, any other studies on children in relation to what the origin might be. We know that those children are smoking and that they're not under a lot of stress and not drinking a lot of coffee and stuff. It may be eating a lot of sugar, but the only thing I can see is asbestos. I can see baby powder. Uh, those are two things I can see, and then hot dogs. Things like hot dogs, that, that can also help to produce it. Though, and then a low, a low function in immunity. If you look at COVID, they were always concerned about children and elderly because the immune system of the children wasn't very strong. Uh, yeah, um, it's been said <coughs> that um, Vegetarians are kind of lacking in some of their minerals, uh, especially B12. And a lot of vegetarians actually use a multivitamin every day. On a, long, on a, on a constant basis, is that uh, bad for you? Well, I'll say this. <clears throat> Somebody <clears throat> does a lot of defining and I don't believe they know what they're talking about. When you look at the vegetarian kingdom in the animal world, who's given them their B12? When you look in the wilderness where God took all flesh away from Israel and he only gave them the corn of heaven, if you look at corn, you'll see that there's a disease you can get from corn <laughs> called pellagra. Um, but no one had pellagra in the wilderness. But someone could have easily said that in this age, oh, what about pellagra? And they could be very concerned. And it would look like a legitimate argument. And the B12 conversation is something that scientists have said. But they've been wrong before. And they once said that a person couldn't even live on a vegetarian diet. And that was the furthest thing from the truth. They were denying what God said about Israel in the wilderness. They were denying Adam's lifestyle and Adam's diet. I'm perfectly sure Adam wasn't um, eating a few of the little little bitty chickens that were in the Garden of Eden to give B12. I'm sure that he was perfectly okay. I believe what happens is that when we context the way God wants us to, I believe nature compensates herself. I believe nature has her ability to produce her own material, just like nature produces her own cholesterol, regardless of how much we, we eat. If we don't eat no cholesterol at all, nature will still form it and produce it. Uh, herself. I believe that our bodies can and will do that same thing with any material that we need. Somewhere Ellen White said that 
through fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables, and we can probably find it. I'm sure if I'm searching on software, I'll find it. She said, through fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables, all the nutrients the body need can be acquired. Isn't that something? Well, I shouldn't say, isn't it something? God showed that to us in Genesis, and he showed us in, in the wilderness as well. So I hear the scientists, but I'm not listening to them. They'll tell me, and this is controversial what I'm going to say, they'll tell me I need a COVID shot, and I'm not going to listen to them. I got COVID. I didn't die. I know a million people who did. I know people who got COVID and died. I know people who got shots and died. But they'll tell me if I don't get the COVID shot, I'm going to spread it or I'm going to die. And I know better. I know better. So trusting God, learning how the human body works, very important. And think about it. Where is the horse getting his B12? You know, and the other vegetarian animals. Are they sneaking and eating little <laughs> chickens, eggs, and stuff? No, nope, they're not. So I believe that God has made a made a, a a means of supplementing if there's any deficiency at all. And I trust God that we'll be all right. I trust Him that we'll be all right. But I've heard that before, and I've heard a lot of conversation about it. But I've also seen that when we are on point, we lack nothing at all. We lack nothing at all. And you'll really see it when sickness come around. When we do right with our bodies, we do well. We do very well, very, very well. I can't wait to get there, y'all. I want y'all to pray for me. Um, I want to put y'all in a challenge. I was supposed to give y'all a challenge. Um, I guess I better wait until the end. I'm going to wait until the end for the challenge. I'll come back next year. We'll see who, who followed through. But uh, any other questions? Any other questions? Well, for the people online, we do, because they can't hear the questions if we don't. You, you talked about the, um, with kids, um, the, the powder, the kids, you know, that's put on kids, and the hot dogs. But what about the, I don't know if you mentioned this earlier, cow's milk, because most kids are getting cow's milk, not breast milk, and even adults are stuck on that cow's milk. And I say that because... Um, all through my teens and halfway through my 20s, I was doing about a half a gallon a day with cookies and cakes and pies. So cow, and I said I would never give it up because I was stuck on the cow's milk. And I know a lot of people drink cow's milk. <clears throat> well, think of it this way. I had, some, I had a neighbor and he raised cattle down in Missouri where we live. And um, it's a little bit funny because they were always sick. <laughs> they don't make fun of us for being vegetarian, but they were always sick. And um, he had some cattle, and he would have to go to the local, what we call MFA, and get pharmaceuticals for his cow. Now, he wanted to eat the cow, but the cow had got sick too, just like he was. So he, 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 he gave it some booster shots, and some of the cows died, and he just took them to the back of his property and the vultures ate them. But when his cows would get sick, he would give them a lot of pharmaceuticals. Strangely, when cow's milk is being produced, we got a lot of dairy farms out there where we live. Inquire and ask any dairy farmer, what are they screening for when you give your milk to the companies? What are they screening for? What are they looking for in that milk? It's a sad reality that a woman cannot use drugs and breastfeed her baby. They won't let a heroin addict drug breastfeed her child or a woman on, on, on some, some, some drug breastfeed her baby. But there are people who are drinking the milk from cows that are on carcinogenic material. There are some of the pharmaceuticals that they give to the cattle that are literally carcinogenic. We have no business. In fact, even the labeling tell you it's carcinogenic. And they're giving it to the cow. Then the person turns around when the cow looks like he's okay, they eat the cow. And so I would be very careful with that cow's milk. The same way we've seen a lot of fraudulency with the meat packing industries, uh, the same way there's a ton of mercury in the fish and other poisons, I guarantee you, even the cheese. I have worldly people who are not thinking about being vegetarian who won't touch cheese at all because they work in the cheese factories 
and they've seen what go on and they're like, no way. And I know that that milk is not exempt. That milk, think about it, everybody's abusing their job nowadays. Police beating everybody up for nothing. <laughs> everybody, babysitter beating the baby when nobody's looking. You'd better not think that milk is all right. <laughs> better be careful. And I'm gonna say this, what is the replacement of the cow's milk? If you want a quality amount of calcium in your body, one of the things you can do is remember, leafy green vegetables is Grand Central Station. You got a lot of power. Anybody in here, I'll give you this challenge. Put a living green meal on your salad, on your plate every day, whether it be spinach leaves, romaine lettuce, or any kind of leaves, green leaves. If you eat two fistfuls of green leaves, I bet you you won't be the same. I'll give you 10 days. You'll be a different person. Russell, you know what I'm talking about. We did that challenge. It's good stuff. Come on. Russell, I done fell off of it. I want to get back on, but it's hard to do it in the airport and <laughs> in other places. It's just hard. But I want to go back. So pray for me, saints. My life is unstable because I'm living hard, trying to make things happen. And it has caused me to overwork. But I want to get back to where God wants me. And I'm believing that when I get back here next year, I got something to prove. I'm, I'm disappointed about this trip. Sister Rose called me and I was down. I was like a boxer who hadn't trained for the battle. <laughs> Usually I have enough for a couple of days and I can, I can do a cleanse and all that and trim down, but the Lord said, you're going just the way you are. Tell the saints what you done did. <laughs> so I'm just being honest, the saints, I got caught not doing as I should have. But God is good. Um, we'll, you'll see. I promise you, you'll see a big difference soon. I've seen major changes with just a little bit. In fact, I was sharing Brother Brown earlier. You'll see. Watch and see. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, we have a lot to gain, and God's going to give it. He's going to grant it. You can replace the cow's milk with uh, carrot juice as well. Your carrot juice provides calcium. You can drink it all day, every day. It doesn't harm your body at all. You get no trouble out of the carrot juice. Only thing it'll do is detox your liver, pull mucus from your body, um, make your heart very, very strong, make your bones amazingly strong, make your eyes super sharp. Uh, it has no negatives. The carrot will benefit you tremendously, and it's a perfect replacement for milk. And it will give you far more energy than you can get from milk, and even with your energy drinks, the carrot will give you energy with no trouble and you'll like it, you'll like it a lot. Do we have any other questions before we wind up? Any more? Okay, our time has come. I wanna thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, it's a battle, I tell the saints all the time, it's a battle. Uh, to be a medical missionary in 2022 and to try to acquire what is needed to be effective in this work, it, it's a battle. Um, there are those that may get things handed to them or given to them and praise God. That's not my story. Uh, then again, it is. There are times people do give us things and we're able to move forward. But in this short time, the Lord has allowed us to acquire a lot for just a small group. Uh, and we should see big, big changes in the very near future. Please keep us in prayer. I know my time is not up yet. I'll be here Sabbath, I'll be here tomorrow happened now. The saints, uh, pray for me. Uh, tomorrow's message, I'm wrestling in my heart. Uh, I will definitely share uh, just praying about what's in my heart. But uh, as far as cancer is concerned, there are some herbs that can help you and they'll be your friend. One herbs you want to remember is burdock. Burdock is your friend. But if you're dealing with cancer, burdock is your friend. Chickweed is your friend. You want those herbs. Red clover, that's your friend. In spite of what anybody says, astragalus, that's your friend. Patiaco, that's your friend. You want those herbs. Those herbs are your friend. If you use those herbs and exercise and eat at least uh, a salad, regardless of whatever else is on your plate, if you eat a salad a day with those herbs in your system and you exercise, go to bed on time. Stay away from stress and sugar you'll find that your body can do very, very, very well. You'll probably break that chain. The more exercise you put in, the more you breathe deeply, the more your, your pH levels change. When you get up past seven, 
cancer should be taking a back seat. The closer you get on the alkaline side, the further cancer will back away from you. But it's important to exercise. You can't do it just drinking or taking pills or sleeping. You gotta exercise. Oxygen debt will cause waste elimination. Proper amount of water, good nutrition, uh, eliminating stress, eating on a schedule, not eating too much. That's enough to help you overthrow that cancer thing. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You can simply tell yourself, I'm going to get in the best of shape that I've ever been in. And you push it with everything you got. You will, walk, you will outrun it. You will outrun it. Everyone I know that walks when they have cancer, they're on a faithful brisk walk, they do really good. The ones who say, I don't want to walk, I don't, I don't feel like it. They don't do well. The one who drinks their teas do well. The one who says, I don't want that, that's nasty. I've seen the story enough. I can tell, I know what I'm looking at when I see it. Tonight I want to ask if we can rededicate ourselves to God, our bodies, as we open Sabbath tonight. I just want to, I just want to ask God to, to have mercy on us. I know something on, 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 the, on the screen that you saw tonight you probably have been guilty of. Did anyone see anything that they were guilty of? Or maybe you guys are a lot better than me. Just raise your hand if you saw something or you heard something that said, I got room to improve. Well, I definitely see that for myself. Let us have a word of prayer. I just want to pray a special prayer to God, just asking him to reclaim our bodies and minds. And I want to ask if he would become our personal doctor and our dietitian and our instructor. Father, as we look to you, we do thank you for the Holy Sabbath hours that have come upon us. As we review and study tonight, we realize that there is a lifestyle that cancer cannot resist. And the truth is, many people that we know are well endowed into that lifestyle. Lord, even in this room, we, there are areas where we can find in the study of tonight where we can improve. Lord, we want to do better. We want to eat right and live right. We want to walk right before you. We want to walk and march toward the Canaan land and not toward Egypt with our lifestyle. Please be the God that healeth us. As you promised, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Take us by the hand, educate us, lead us out of Egypt. And please help us across the Jordan. Don't let us get caught up in the wilderness with politics and and conversations about diet where we're rebelling against you and the prophets. Give us the conviction to deny ourselves and like Caleb and Joshua, to be willing to stand up against giants if we have to, to accomplish our goal. Please reclaim our body, our mind and spirit. Be our physician in chief. Help us to get back to studying the human body and the medicine that you've made available. Lord, that when that day of testing may come, like Daniel, we may know what we shall eat and how we shall live. Reclaim our bodies. Prepare them to be a living temple, holy and acceptable in your sight. We pray this in Christ's name. Thanking you, Father. Amen. Thank you again for coming out tonight. I hope you learned something. Um, I love to review. I learn as I study. Uh, I hope you all have a great, a great trip home. Have safe travels, and the Lord say the same. We'll reconvene on tomorrow, 9:30 a.m. First session, uh, part two.